What is going on everybody? You see a Jaguar here with Jinjag.com and I got home from work today and I still don't have power. It's like day five or six without power. It's getting super annoyed, but they don't want me to come out with another video. They don't want me to be successful, but I promise you guys, no matter what, I was gonna come out with a Texans and Jaguars recap video. I was gonna come out with a film room video and I was gonna come up with a preview of this Titans game. So you can expect these videos coming out every week from now on, and then plus maybe some more videos, who the hell knows, but um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now this Sunday is a home opener against the Tennessee Titans. I am so pumped. We have a chance to go 2-0 in the AFC South, and I really think Everbank Field is going to be packed, and I think it's gonna be hype. So it's gonna be a super fun atmosphere. Super excited about it. And let's go ahead and preview this game. So let's get it. So our schedule fared a little differently this year. Usually we don't start off with so many AFC South games, but week one, we play the two time defending AFC Ch South champions. And then week two, we basically play the preseason favorite to win the AFC South with the Tennessee Titans. Now, these are two different kinds of teams, uh, especially on the offense. The Texans don't really have much of a powerful offense to really worry about. The only offensive weapon you really had to worry about too, too much was DeAndre Hopkins. But the Titans are a whole different story. The Titans, they have, obviously they're led in their ground game with, with DeMarco Murray. They've got Derrick Henry, but then they upgraded their wide receiving cores a lot this year by adding on guys like Corey Davis and the fifth overall pick in the 2017 draft. And then they got Eric Decker a little bit later uh, after, you know, a couple months after free agency ended. And then also you had the tight ends, you know, they got Delaney Walker, he's a great player, and they just have a great overall offensive line. But on paper, their defense isn't as good as the, Tex the Texans. Now, we pretty much worked the Texans last Sunday. You know, it'll be surprising if we do that again, even though, you know, their defensive line talent isn't as good as the Texans. It's just, it'd be weird to go back out there and dominate like we did last time. But I went back and rewatched the Raiders-Titans game, which they wound up falling. I rewatched that game and it seemed like it was just two teams that were good, but it seems like Oakland just was a little bit better that game. Now, some things the Titans did wrong that game. Uh, they weren't very good in the red zone. They were, instead of getting touchdowns, they were kicking a lot of short field goals. And also uh, their special teams wasn't very good. But on top of that, they missed a bunch of tackles that game. And you know, it helped out Marshawn Lynch a bunch that game and his running style was much like Fournette. And, they weren't able to really stop Marshawn Lynch. And this whole bad tackling was led by Jonathan Cyprian. I rewatched the game and I was like, man, how much of an upgrade was Barry Church for us? But also on top of that, the they weren't very good on third on third downs. In the second half, I believe they were like two for seven on third down. So it just wasn't a very good, uh, you know, they didn't have very good third down efficiency this game. But this is really like a must get for the Titans, uh, especially they are the preseason favorite. They do not want to get into that 0-2 hole. They have a pretty tough schedule after the Jaguars. Uh, they have to, you know, go to Houston and play the Texans. They have to, you know, play the Seahawks, and I believe they also play the Steelers. So um, it's a tough beginning of the road for this for the Titans. So they're definitely going to be motivated during this game, especially after what happened last year, where the Jaguars basically knocked them out of the playoffs. But some of the keys to victory. Um, they have Marcus Mariota, who's obviously was a lot more mobile than Tom Savage. So we've got to find a way to really get pressure on him. And then once we get pressure on him, be able to contain him. Now, I think it will be great if we were able to do a lot like last game where we forced him to a lot of third and longs and then get our nickel defense in there. You know, I believe they were in nickel defense like 91% of the, the game last time. Paul Pazuzzi only saw like eight or nine snaps. And a lot of that was just due to the Jaguars putting them in so many passing situations you know they had so many sacks they weren't able to really pick up many yards on first down and they just held them to a lot of like third five and longer so our nickel defense is freaking outstanding you know especially our d-line um, our linebackers you know between miles jack and telvin smith they are both fire fire 
linebackers. So much speed, really, really good. I really like that unit. But also this game, we are going to have to be able to lean on the pass a little bit. Now, of course, we are going to be running the ball a lot because that's what we want to be. You know, we have Leonard Fournette. Uh, we want to be that physical, hard-nosed football team that's able to be able to, um, you know, get some running yards on you when they know we are going to run the ball. So, but the thing is this game, uh, we're probably, this team is more built to be able to defend the run. And, you know, their defensive back, the, their defensive back group just isn't very good. So, um, I see us potentially being able to get a lot more passing yards this game. Uh, probably going to have to lean on Blake Bortles a little bit more this game. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens over the course of the game. But also a big thing is, let's just keep riding this great defense that we had, man. I mean, last game, last game we did great. And last game uh, when the Titans played the Oakland Raiders, they did not do very well in the run game. You know, they had that exotic smash mouth kind of football team, but they weren't able to really pick up many yards in the running game, which is surprising coming from the team. But, um, you know, we've got to be able to stop them, you know, their run game. You know, get some more pressure on a quarterback. Let's have another dominating defensive performance this game. Like, I just have a feeling this game that the Jaguars are going to start, you know, running the ball a lot at the beginning of the game, just really trying to establish that run game. And then I think they're going to probably try to take a lot more shots deep on these guys. They aren't as built to defend the pass like the Texans are. Um, you know, I really be think that we can start getting in the bite on the play action and then throw it deep to, you know, probably Marquise Lee. Now, hopefully Marquise Lee, last game, the only, he didn't really have many catches last game, but, or he didn't have any catches, I should say, last game, but what he, what Marquise Lee, I think, needs to work on, he needs to get more physical, I think. Uh, a lot of times he was being thrown off track on his routes. Um, I just didn't think he was, like, physical enough, so I hope to see kind of more of that out of Marquise Lee, but um, I really think he and Keelan Cole are the players that would be able to take the top off of the defense. Now, Keelan Cole, with this Allen Robinson injury, he's going to have to step up a lot, but he's had three games in a row where he's had drops, so he's kind of dropping off a little bit. The coaches still like him. I mean, they like, obviously, his route running ability and all that kind of stuff, but this guy has to start doing something on the field. Now, that's really all I can think of right now. I really wasn't too prepared going into this video just because I went home hoping that power would be on, but it's not, so I drove right out to UCF and, you know, filmed this video, but really wanted to get this video out super pumped about this game on Sunday man I'm going to be at the bank let's fill the bank guys let's make the bank loud let's make the bank hype we have a chance to take a huge step in the AC South and go 0 and 2 I mean not 0 and 2 but 2 and 0 I'm still used to saying 0 and 2 but we have a chance to go 2 and 0 on the AC South so let's go out there and go balls to the walls man I'm so excited I'm going to be at Everbank Field hype as shit and it's gonna be a blast so with all that said this is uc at jaguar with jinjag.com and i will see you guys sunday in your wildest dream did you ever envision 10 sacks four turnovers in one game you know i don't know if i i dream in my wildest dreams you know a lot of most of the time i'm thinking about you know my wife in my wildest dreams <laughs>